So this is part three of my video debunking a video from a comedian claiming he defeated every argument against gun control. His video had 23 points. So here's my response to his arguments 11 through 15. Number 11, the government is bound to mess this up. Maybe, but that's also true when it comes to enforcing any law. So again, unless you're advocating abolishing all laws, you can't make that argument. The government has been passing gun control laws since 1938. It's currently 2021 and here you are making a video about why we need more government gun control. That means the government has been messing this up for 80 years. We've had 80 years of the government passing more and more gun control. At what point will it be enough? They essentially banned guns in the UK and now they're talking about banning knives. After banning so-called assault weapons, Canada is now trying to ban airsoft guns. So no. I don't have to advocate abolishing all laws to advocate for no more gun control because the government has been doing it and messing it up for 80 plus years. Not to mention, we are talking about a constitutional right. Most importantly, a right that the people use to protect the most valuable thing on this planet, life. So no, we are not okay with just giving it up to the government who has proven its incompetence time and time again. Number 12. Gun ownership is a right and not a privilege. You know what else is a right? A speedy trial. That's in the Sixth Amendment. Yet look at our court systems. The Eighth Amendment specifies no cruel and unusual punishment, but many of you are fine with the death penalty. The Tenth Amendment specifies states' rights, yet there are thousands of federal laws that supersede those. How about the Seventh Amendment that specifies a right to a jury trial for any civil matter involving more than $20? Although the current standard is $75,000. And what about the Fifth Amendment? Due process. Some of you make the argument that cops are allowed to just kill people they're afraid of. Hell, even the good guy with a gun argument is in direct violation of due process. A civilian shooting someone is not due process. The reality is that the people who argue that the Second Amendment is a right and not a privilege don't actually understand any of our other rights. And if you're questioning whether or not a comedian is enough of a constitutional scholar to make this video, okay, aside from this video being full of well-researched, fully sourced arguments, I'm an honors level American history graduate of Columbia University. I'll put my diploma up against your memes any day. Are you serious? This guy who just bragged about being a Columbia University graduate just justified infringing on the Second Amendment by pointing to other rights that are also infringed on. That's the equivalent of telling your wife it's okay to cheat on her because you cheated on your last three wives. Even worse, he's literally making an argument that justified self-defense, you know, the thing you do where you stop someone from trying to kill you, is a violation of due process. Except due process is a legal obligation of the states. Thus, it only applies when the states act against individuals. If an individual acts against another individual, they get arrested and then go to court. And if they so choose, go to trial where they can request a jury of their peers and present their case. This is literally the definition of due process. Oh, and bragging about having a history degree from Columbia? Yeah, I'm not even going to touch that cesspool of self-aggrandizing intellectual elitism that you use to mask your insecurities. Just know that it was cringy. Number 13. It's not just a right, it's my God-given right. No, no, and no. Even if you are a religious person, God did not write the Second Amendment. James Madison did. Also, there are only three countries in the world that have gun ownership granted as a right in the Constitution. The United States, Mexico, and Guatemala. So unless you think the rest of the entire world are a bunch of godless heathens, maybe let's keep this argument to civics. The first law of nature is self-preservation, meaning all things prioritize their own survival above all else and would do what is necessary to stay alive. That sounds pretty damn God-given to me. And funny you mention civics, because if you knew what you were talking about, you'd know that the Bill of Rights explicitly states, we the people retain our rights. The Constitution does not create our rights. The rights of the people existed before the founding of the United States. The Constitution merely enshrines those rights. I don't know what they do in other countries, and I don't care, that's their business. But I know over here in America, our Constitution enshrines our God-given right to protect our lives and country with arms in the Second Amendment. Number 14, what's the point? It'll never work. Well, gun control has worked over a hundred times in other countries. If your argument is that it just can't work in America, then you are saying that Americans are either uniquely violent or stupid or both. That doesn't sound very patriotic to me. Also, again, it doesn't have to work. It just has to work better. In the 1980s, Mothers Against Drunk Driving started pushing reform. In 1985, drunk drivers accounted for 41% of all American traffic fatalities. Within 10 years, that number plummeted all the way down to 32%. Do people still die from drunk drivers? Sure. Is it way better than it used to be? Also sure. Did he really just say that gun control doesn't have to work, it just has to work better? 
This is lunacy. Gun control doesn't work because it will always fail to address the underlying issues driving murders and suicides while further restricting our Second Amendment rights every single time you try to make gun control work better. And don't get me started on the idiocy of his moms against drunk driving analogy. As successful as moms against drunk driving was at lowering drunk driving fatality rates, you want to know what they didn't do? Try to ban cars or try to ban alcohol. They got laws passed that held the person accountable for their action. They didn't try to infringe on people's ability to drive or own a car, which is the complete opposite of what gun control does. Number 15. Chicago has some of the strictest gun control, but some of the most violence in America. So here's an odd thing. The city with the highest murder rate is actually St. Louis, followed by Baltimore, Birmingham, Detroit, and Dayton, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Kansas City, Memphis, and Cleveland. So Chicago isn't even in the top 10. Where exactly is Chicago? Number 28, just below Buffalo. But even if Chicago is number one, which it isn't, this is an argument made by people unwilling to accept the simple fact that 95% of the guns used in crime in Chicago come from outside of the city. Again, we have no checkpoints at state borders. You know how close lax gun law Indiana is to Chicago? Let's say you lived on 108th Street on Chicago's south side. Your gas station down the block is in Indiana. But do you wanna know if gun laws actually work in America? The states with the least amount of gun deaths per capita, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New York, Hawaii, and Connecticut, all rank among the states with the strictest gun laws. And the states with the most gun deaths per capita, Oklahoma, Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, and Alaska, all rank among the states with the least restrictive gun laws. Quite the 10 coincidences. This is such a slimy argument. The reason why 90% of guns used in crime in Chicago come from outside of Chicago is because there are no gun stores in Chicago. All of the gun stores are in the surrounding cities. Where else would they come from? That's like saying all the made in China products that are used in the US came from China. No, you think? He talks about how close Indiana is as if the main source of guns are coming from Indiana. They're not. Of all the guns coming into Chicago from out-of-state dealers, only 20% are from Indiana. If you compare the number of guns coming from Indiana versus those coming from inside the state, 70% of the guns are coming from inside the state of Illinois, all of which are subject to the same strict gun laws. So the question remains, why aren't we seeing the same type of gun violence in the surrounding cities of Chicago that we're seeing inside of Chicago if all the gun stores are in the surrounding cities of Chicago? I'll tell you why. Poverty. You think it's a coincidence that the vast majority of gun violence in this country comes from the poorest parts of our major cities? It's not that way because there aren't enough gun control laws. It's that way because the drug economy and gang violence thrive in poverty. The violence of Chicago isn't even widespread in Chicago. It's happening on the south and west sides of Chicago. Can you take a guess what the economic status of the people living on the west and south side of Chicago is? Exactly. This is what the anti-gun crowd does. They use deceptive, superficial stats without providing context. Then my sexy black ass has to get up here and deconstruct these deceiving stats while this guy farts into a rolled up bedazzled copy of his Columbia degree just so he can increase the pretentiousness of his own flatulence. Guns aren't political. That's why I need your help getting this message to spread on YouTube by clicking the thumbs up button, leaving a comment to let me know what you think of the video, then subscribing to the channel. But most importantly, click that bell symbol. For products featured in this video, click the links in the description.